you're not talking about your body in a vacuum. What I mean by that is the way that you talk about yourself and about other people implicitly teaches everyone who has heard you what you think is beautiful, what you think is valuable, and what you think isn't. Well, yeah, duh. What the hell? Obviously, if I don't like a certain thing, I'm going to vocalize it. I'm sorry that somebody else heard me say I don't like that certain thing. Like if I sat there and I said, I don't like pineapple on pizza. Are you going to now find it like you're going to be really insecure that you like pineapple on pizza? Dude, get your own personality. Why are you guys so incredibly uh, obsessed with everybody, what everybody else thinks about you? I understand what you're saying. Y y she's basically saying like, because you say that being fat is not good, you're actively putting down fat people. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think it's a good thing. It's, it's not healthy to be fat. So when you say that, yes, 100%. What am I supposed to do otherwise? Am I just supposed to be like, I, I don't know, like, I guess I'm supposed to like say the wrong thing to make you guys feel better? No, that's not something I'm going to do, dude. If I think that you guys are fat and I think that's not good and you get upset that I don't think that it's not good, what do you want me to do about that, dude? I'm sorry that you feel that way, but with all due respect, go, go, go handle your shit yourself. Y y you're a grown woman. I don't know what to say. You are literally a grown woman. Fix your own problems, dude. Stop posting your insecurities upon everybody else because you don't like being fat while bragging about being fat. It doesn't make sense. Is beautiful what you think is valuable and what you think isn't. Even if that wasn't your intention. That'd be like a gay man getting upset that you think heterosexual women are like attractive. Like what, are you, like, what am I even supposed to do about that, dude? I can't believe that you said that, dude. I can't believe that you said that woman had nice domesticated butt cheeks. And here I am with a straight elongated BBC and you don't love that? No, I don't. Sorry, sorry, sorry. In the same way that I don't think that being fat is very attractive or good for you in any way. I'm sorry that you don't think that way, but... I don't know what to tell you. Like, just simply thinking is going to make it. Just simply thinking means that other people are going to find offense to that. No matter what you do, there's going to be somebody that's going to be offended by that, dude. It is what it is. There are there are incredibly stupid people out there. And they, are, they have no problem saying incredibly stupid stuff. So why should I have to limit what I'm saying? If anything, wouldn't it be better to know my true intentions instead of, like, me sugarcoating everything? Or making it seem like it's not as bad as it actually is because I don't want to, I don't know, offend you? No, I don't care. I'm going to tell you what I think. And if you if you don't like that, then that's fine. You can just leave or whatever. Or even if you only meant to talk about yourself or your own insecurities, that's not, not my insecurities, bro. If, I, if I'm sitting here and somebody goes, hey, man, um, tell me what you think about obesity. I'm going to go, oh, it's just not good. It's like incredibly unhealthy. It's incredibly uh, bad for you in terms of like this daily life. You also lose a lot of attraction levels and you sit there and you go, it's insecurity. That's just your way of gaslighting people into thinking that like it's a deep problem within me when it's obviously not a deep problem within me. I personally don't even care. If you want to be fat, you can go ahead and be fat. Just acknowledge that it's going to be bad for you. You're trying to reframe the argument to make it seem like I'm the one that's hurt when the reality of the situation is you're obviously the one that's hurt. You want other people to project what you think upon them because it makes you feel bad. And yet you sit there and you say, it's my insecurity. That makes no sense. I don't care. Personally, I have no, I have no skin in the game. Okay. I am neither fat nor am I unhealthy. So when I talk about fat people, it's not to my detriment. All right. But for you, I understand that you are fat. I understand that you have a community of people around you that are also fat and you have a vested interest in ensuring that these people are taken care of or whatever. But I have to let you know something right now. How do you get over your fear of heights? How do you get over your fear of spiders? How do you get over your fear of water? You, would, you, you, you go up to those things and you embrace them, okay? You don't stray away from them because after a while, you start to realize if once you, once you get on these high levels, once you confront the spider and talk shit to the spider, guess what? You realize it's just a spider. You realize it's just heights, right? I mean, I, I would personally be more scared of the heights than I would be the spiders. Spiders are cool people most of the time, and uh, they don't really talk. They don't say anything at all. Um, height is a little bit different. Heights are a little bit scary. It depends because, like, I think I might, like, fall off or whatever, but there's usually barriers and stuff like that. But um, you confront your fears. You don't just walk away from them or tell people not to talk about them because they make you feel bad. You're a grown woman, okay? When have you, you've never learned this ever in your life that you're supposed to confront your fears instead of telling people? Not even yourself either, by the way. That's crazy. You remember when your teachers told you sticks and stones or just like ignore it? Why don't you do that, huh? Like, <laughs> if you don't like it that bad, do you really think the solution is telling other people to stop talking about the thing that you don't like? That's cringe.
Even if you only meant to talk about yourself or your own insecurities, that's not how language works. We don't get to draw a line around our words like that. When you cite hating fatness in your own body, everybody around you who has fatness or perceives that they have fatness has learned, hmm, they don't like that. Yeah, no shit. I don't care though. I, I, what do you talk about? That's like me saying, I don't think that smoking cigarettes is good. And then there's like a guy next to me who's smoking a cigarette. What am I going to do about that? Like, it, 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 do, am I intentionally making it seem like he's a bad person for smoking cigarettes? No, I just don't like smoking cigarettes. I think it's unhealthy. He can do whatever he wants in the same way that you could be fat. I don't care personally, but I do think it's a bad thing. So what is the solution here? Just don't talk about it, right? Is that really what we're doing here? And immediately wonders, do they not like that in me? No, most of the time, that's, it, you're going too far on this, okay? If, first of all, many people are not even really even talking about this, okay? But if it does come up in argument or conversation or whatever, and somebody goes, yeah, I think that's probably not good to be healthy and your friend is unhealthy because they're fat, um, I don't, like, w they're probably not, like, directly looking at that individual and going, like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I guess, inadvertently, uh, the substance of what they're saying, right, is that they are technically saying that that person is unhealthy, but usually that fat person knows that they're unhealthy because they're fat. Most people don't walk around thinking that because they get up and their knees are shaking because because they're carrying so much extra weight and they have consistent back problems or their respiratory issues are always, always evident to them because they're always out of breath. Most of these people know that it's an issue, okay? They're just living with it because it's more work to lose weight than it is to continuously eat the sloppy, disgusting, well, in some cases, really, really delicioso food, but we all know what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, cr crazy amounts of calories for what you're eating. But that's really what it comes down to there. It, it, it's not so much that you're intentionally doing, it's more of a passive thing. And then also, most people know that being fat is not good. So I understand what you're saying, but the solution should not be just don't talk about it because you might offend somebody. That's insane. If anything, you would want to talk about it more because having a dialogue with it at least means that you're willing to confront it at the bare minimum instead of literally just negating the entire talking point because you're scared of it. Because that's how language works. Also, I really hate it when people use these oversimplifications to make it seem like that we're doing something a lot crazier than we actually are doing. If somebody does this and they go, that's just how it is, bro. That's just what we do. That's really fucked up. You know, it's like somebody saying, dude, you're a grown man and then the implication of that is you're old enough to realize that this should not be something that you should be doing it's really fucked up especially if it's an actual valid point okay so if somebody says that's just how language is bro the implication of that is you should have realized this as a uh, uh, an adult as somebody that has language skills that the implication for this would be you're offending other people. But ultimately, I don't give a fuck. Obviously, no matter what you say, you're going to offend somebody. If I said right now that I thought cats were great people, there is going to be somebody out there and they're going to go, oh my God, cats? You think cats are great people? You did. Cats never wash their hands. I've never seen a cat a single time ever wash their hands. They make weird noises and... I don't like the orange ones. There's always going to be somebody that's going to be randomly saying something. It's going to be 100% they're going to be offended by that. So there shouldn't be a, the, the, the diagnosis of this, right? The solution should not be just don't talk about it, bro. No, it should be talk about it more. And hopefully the person that's there to listen to it is capable enough to at least discern that some things are okay and some things are not okay, right? Like, let's leave it up to the individual in question. Um, that's just how language works, bro. <laughs> like that in me because that's how language works so if you are someone struggling with insecurity and you truly care about not hurting people no it's okay first of all dude if you're telling me my words are gonna hurt you because i have a particular way of thinking about this thing then you got to not be in those environments. It's just what it is. You shouldn't be on the internet then if that's the case. You're not a grown woman. You don't have the capability of being able to discern what is and what is not something that you want to hear. I'm sorry to say this shit. Maybe you shouldn't be on the internet. The, sh the solution should never be other people should just not talk about it. That should never be the solution, dude. I do think though that some things are definitely bad to hear. I agree with that. Like for instance, when somebody says that this, this particular event didn't happen and it turns out, yes, it did happen. And then like their whole audience base hears that it didn't happen or whatever. Or if you say like, if you start denying the Holocaust or even qu asking a question like, do we really know how many Jews died in the Holocaust? Yes, we do know how many Jews died in the Holocaust. But the implication of that is you're doubting the, the, the studies and the researches that we have done 
um, that, that validify all the stuff that we know about. So sometimes even asking questions could be very, very traumatizing or um, terrible, right? I mean, I'm all for freedom of speech, but it's very ignorant for me to say that certain words or phrases or even sentences are going to hurt vast amounts of people. But I just hope that you on the receiving ends of those words are you're well equipped enough to be able to discern and pick apart that sentences or whatever. Um, I think people should have a wheelhouse of ways in order to deal with problems instead of just focusing on one thing, which seems to be what these people always have, which is the fat acceptance movement. I don't like that personally. I think that you should have a, a whole uh, warehouse of things. Like if you can't win on this argument point, right? I think people should have the ability to pull from all their life experiences and what they've learned and, you know, be able to solve their problems based off those things instead of just going to this one thing, because that one thing seldom is going to be able to solve all your problems. You ever talk to a religious person and they always have God as their back or like their, their mirror force, right? Like you've activated my trap card. That's always what they say. And it's fine to have religion, as a way to solve your problems but if that's the only way you solve your problems that's a weak person that's not somebody that has a lot of experiences so i would always recommend somebody to have many different places that they can get solutions to problems because that tells me that you're more of an equipped person you have and you have the, you have the ability to pull from multiple places is much better than just going to one spot because you end up here which is somebody just saying just don't talk about it in general because it hurts my feelings bro which is crazy uh have you never been on the internet dude someone struggling with insecurity and you truly care about not hurting people i don't really care about not hurting people to be honest i guess it depends like physically i probably don't want to hurt people unless it was something i had to do like if it was in self-defense naturally i don't want to hurt anybody um but if you're saying that in general i shouldn't be hurting people based off of words i don't care go fuck yourself you know suck me off what do you want from me dude i'm if i hurt your feelings inadvertently i don't care personally if i said something uh with the intention of hurting you also that was my entire intention so again i did care about hurting you in that particular sense and there's nothing wrong with hurting somebody verbally it's completely fine some people just hurt regardless of what you say you ever talk to somebody and they just start crying because you said the most basic shit ever or even something that you were right about and they start crying i don't care <laughs> What should I care about that, dude? I know I'm correct on this. Paradoxically, you got to not hurting people. Paradoxically, you got to fix your shit because you're hurting other people by hating yourself. I'm not hating myself by thinking that being obese is bad. If anything, I'm contributing to positive health because I don't think it's a good thing and I'm not contributing to it. Uh, okay, whatever, dude. This woman's trying to gaslight people into thinking that they are actually the problem when the reality of the situation is this, these are just very insecure people projecting their own insecurities upon everybody else by saying that they shouldn't say what they think is totally fine when obviously the majority of human beings do not think it's fine. So this woman is just dumb. That was a really hard pill for me to swallow and I reject... <laughs> uh, the pill was hard to swallow, but the, the thousands of calories though. Mm. By hating yourself. That was a really hard pill for me to swallow, and I rejected that lesson for a long time, but that's the bottom line. When fat- That's the bottom line. That's right, the Texas rattlesnake. Did that reference. lesson for a long time, but that's the bottom line. When fat people call out fat phobia and anti-fatness that happens to them, people love to denounce it and say that it doesn't exist. But when there are other videos with fat people just doing normal things, then people say like all these fat phobic comics about like watching their weight go to the gym, super original stuff, you know? And then those same people will be like, fat people make fatness their entire personality. And it's like, y'all comment it all the time on our videos. So then when we flip the script and- I think certain people probably get a lot more comments towards certain things that they contribute to. So these people making videos primarily on fat acceptance or fat liberation or whatever those whatever is synonymous term you want to use, whatever genre that is, obviously you're going to get a comments. You're going to get a lot of comments on that. Like it'd be the equivalent of somebody making videos only on Dragon Ball Z and being surprised that you're making you're getting a ton of comments or people asking you about Dragon Ball Z. Quite naturally, it's going to be something that happens because of the content that in which you represent. Now, I understand if you're talking about it in the sense of like somebody that's just fat and they make content based off of something that is not them being fat and they put that out into the world and they display themselves in a fat way, obviously, and other people see that and they go, oh my God, big back alert, big back, big back, right? Obviously, naturally, that's going to be probably not something you want to hear, but that's also something that you're going to have to understand that's going to happen on the internet, right? 
Um, since I've started making videos, I've realized that a lot of people point out that I have an incomplete beard, which is fine. Or um, the fact that I wear a hat consistently because I'm insecure about my balding, right? Um, yes, of course. I understand all this stuff. They, people are going to comment on things all the time. And that is just something you're going to have to understand. It is what it is. And sometimes they're not even doing it with malicious intent. Sometimes people are just curious. Sometimes people just want to know things. Sometimes people are just people. And I feel like when it comes to being fat, it's not an exception. People are going to obviously point out that you're fat it's a very easy thing to go for as well because it's like very obvious so if you're upset that people are commenting on your fatness and you don't like that the solution should not be don't comment on it it should just be more so of a maybe you do something about it yourself because it seems to be a problem that you have instead of the other person if that makes any sense we're like wow you're it's, it's, it's it's a lot of externalizing these people don't ever tend to actually think about the problems that they have instead they always want to diagnose other people's problems it's always external. Here's what anti-fatness would look like. Here's what fat phobia looks like. Y'all get pissed off, but you're just proving our point. A lot of the time when these people say fat phobia, most of the time, it's bullshit. Like, it'd be like somebody going, hey, uh, maybe you should get your respiratory. Like, I've noticed I've watched a bunch of your videos, and it seems like every time you get up out of a seat or you walk down the street slightly, you're out of breath. And that's not good. I don't think you know if that's not good or not. Um, have you been to the doctor? Have you got your blood work done? Are you high cholesterol? Do you have high cholesterol? Do you have heart problems? Do you have this problem? Do you have that problem? A lot of those questions will be just flat out thrown into the, the category of fat phobia. And a lot of people look at that and they go, uh, that's not fat phobia. That person's genuinely asking a question. And of course, these people would go, no, I know it's fat phobia because I had these experiences. And because I've had these experiences, I know that these people are basically like Trojan horsing themselves with the intention of them being good and beautiful and virtuous, but actually they're being malicious and they're being terrible and they're being derogatory. I know exactly what they're doing, but you don't know. Um, you might you might be able to deduce it sometimes, but all, a, a lot of other times you just can't. A lot of people get like really, really off put by that. You lose a lot of people too by, by doing that. Points over and over again. So I will not stop talking about fatness. That's fine. You can totally not stop talking about fatness, but you cannot be upset when people continue to talk about your fatness as a result of that. It's obvious. You're putting yourself out there talking about this very particular thing. Naturally, people are going to comment on that. In the same way that, for instance, if I made videos about Yu-Gi-Oh, there are going to be people that comment about Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. It is a personality trait for me because y'all have made it so that fat people cannot just exist without harm. Well, let's be honest here for a second, dude. It depends on what you mean by harm. Uh, are you talking about literal derogatory comments on the internet? That's a default. And I understand that you may not like that as a default, but people are individuals and the internet is formatted in a particular way where people can say particular things to you that are going to be offensive. And the, uh, the opposite of that would literally just have nobody being able to say anything at all, which would probably mean that you don't get any views or people watching your stuff or even people that like your stuff because we have discriminated against the people that do dislike you. So you would literally have to police the entire internet to a degree that I don't think that you would even get views or people that comment. So if anything, it's a good thing because at least the people that watch you or hate watch you are watching you nonetheless, right? So it's a dumb way of looking at it, dude. But, you know, continue doing you. It's just like a dumb way of it. It literally is like if you had a car channel, you're just upset that people keep commenting on the fact that you don't know how to take care of your car properly. That's literally what that is. Like, it'd be like, <laughs> you know, you're watching you're watching a guy fix a car. And I don't know, he like replaced the engine or something like that. It's a completely different engine. It doesn't work. And sometimes when it turns on, the car, the engine flies out and comes back in like comically like those old cartoons. And then people in the comments are like, I don't think you know how to build cars, bro. And you go, I can't believe people keep commenting on my non-working car skills. I'm so good at building cars. That's what you're doing right now, except with your body. You're making videos about how fat you are and then complaining that people are commenting how fat you are. Because y'all have made it so that fat people cannot just exist without harm. And then also, I think it's also very disingenuous to say fat people cannot just exist. What you're doing is not just existing, dude. You're literally posting videos on the internet. You're doing something extreme and you're getting responses back based off of that. If you're just somebody walking down the street or you're like a person working a regular nine to five, or whatever, seldom do those people ever get people walking up to them like, damn, she big, damn, you big as hell, man. Yo, uh, yo, can I, can I see your asses? Right? They're, they're, you're not really seeing that. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, but on the internet, yeah, of course, especially if you're somebody inducing that particular activity, 100%. So don't sit there. I hate it when people do this shit. I'm just a regular guy. I'm just doing nothing at all. No, the fuck you, you do. You're posting videos on the internet. That's a very extreme thing. Why would you expect not to get pushback based off that stuff that you're saying? That's crazy.
harm. And we always have to talk about fat phobia because it is consistently pushed upon us. Oh, it's a great way of looking at it. It's not my fault because so I'm making videos about fatness, but I'm making videos about fatness and because I'm making videos about fatness and just existing, bro, even though that's obviously not what's happening, you're doing something very extreme and people are critiquing me based off my fatness, which means I'm suffering from the negative effects of fat phobia that I'm technically putting upon myself because I'm making these videos. And because of that, I have to continue making videos on fatness because the fat phobia exists and I have to fight against fat phobia, but I'm getting comments on this and it makes me feel bad And so I'm gonna complain about it and then I'm also gonna make more videos on fat It's like a weird oral boros of never taking accountability and never realizing that you are the reason why this stuff is happening to begin with It's interesting The things that thin people say to fat people reversed okay. Oh my god, you are so inspirational. You go girl! By the way, nobody ever goes up to anybody at the gym. I don't think these people have ever been in the gym a day in their life because if they did, um, they would realize that nobody ever goes up to you. It's it's a very, very um, solo pad, dude. Solo dolo shit. You might see a few dudes working out together, but most of the time people are doing their own thing. Doing Nobody comes up to anybody. It, it's it's That's just what the gym culture is, okay? Um, I know that they have a vested interest in trying to make it seem like fat people are just really, really discriminated against. Um, nope. And you know what, by the way, if a fat person is working out of the gym, nobody even cares. Like that's probably like people probably look at that as inspiration a lot of times. So I, nope, do not believe this. Keep up the hard work and maybe one day you'll be as fat as me. Shredded expert. It's probably your first time here. So let me show you how it's done. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, no, no, I just I broke my arm. Well, you know, it probably wouldn't have happened to you if you weren't so thin. Have you considered trying to gain some weight? I don't even know what the vice versa of this is. I broke my arm or I didn't break my arm because I was fat. I, I don't I don't understand. When you're fatter, you usually have I knew a lady that was so big and she had never realized how big she was, I guess. Um, but I remember one time she fell down, couldn't get up. And she wasn't even that old. She was like maybe 40. And I remember when she fell down, she literally was on the floor for like a good 30 seconds. And I was like, do you need help? And she was like, no, 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 I got it. I got it. And then she tried to for another 30, 40 seconds. And she was like, I don't think I can get up. And then I, then, then I helped her up. And then she was like, holy shit, uh, I couldn't get up. And then I was like, yeah. And that might not be the uh, biggest problem for somebody that's elderly because they're old, right? But for somebody that's in their 30s or 40s, dude, that's not good. That's a terrible thing to know that you can't get up on yourself. Like if there wasn't somebody else around, you might just have to be fucked. Like you might just have to live there on the floor. And that's not a good thing, obviously. And there's a lot of uh, other things too that a lot of fat people may not realize uh, that are problems until they're problems. So, yeah. But so thin. Have you considered trying to gain some weight? I'm not sure that my weight had anything to do with my arm. I do. You never know. You got hit by a bus. I got hit by a bus. Okay, I see what they're saying. Yeah. When doctors tell you like, oh, yeah, you're coming in for like a nosebleed. Damn, you big as fuck. Hold up. Oh, my God. How'd you even get into it? Oh, you walked in sideways. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll get your nosebleed down packed, but you do, just to be sure... You're big. You're really big, matter of fact. Hey, what's that smell, matter of fact? What is that? Oh, it's you because you're big. Because you're very big. I'm sure that doctors are very mean. I'm sure that there are doctors out there that are very insensitive. But most doctors didn't go to medical school for eight years just to treat you like ass because they're fat phobic. No, that's not the case. Most of these dudes are trying to do their job and they're trying to get you out. They're trying to, they're trying to diagnose you with a problem if there is a problem and sub to prescribe you a solution to that. And most of the time it is diet and exercise. So I don't know what to tell you about that shit. I get it. It's like, it's a working meme of like, go to the doctor's office as fat with a broken arm and the solution to that is lose weight. I understand, but that doesn't happen as well. It's most of the time it's like the doctor's gonna prescribe you weight loss as a added benefit as well to increase health. It totally does. Thin people are super unhealthy. Not like fat people. People forget that what you like is often based on what you see, which is why representation is so important. What you like is often based on what you see. So I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. I'm not gay. I know I should have been gay, though, because think about this. Um, when I was like nine years old and I was watching Goku literally charge up for three episodes and scream for three episodes straight, and I was seeing literal shirtless men fighting for hours upon hours 
um, every single day. I understand that a lot of people might deduce that might that might turn you gay because you're watching these guys oiled up, sweaty, beautiful men, six foot something, big, giant, muscled up dudes. And, uh, you know, a lot of people might look at that and go, you, you obviously are gay after a while, but I'm not gay, obviously. So that's not exactly true. You like what are, what are, what's around you is not exactly true. I, I think to one degree it might be. Like maybe you like the environment you live. I don't know. I don't think – I think this is like a very weird way of like basically saying that if you're around thinner people, you like thinner people more. It could also be other things as well. Like maybe the health cues are important to you. Maybe you just want somebody that's – I don't know, like, personally, you think this person's more attractive? Like, I don't know about that, dude. What we see is not a direct reflection of what is genuinely likable and attractive and good. We live in America, right? I'm, I'm get, I, does does Splotch make a live in America? I think she does. You do realize we have a large, no pun intended, large portion of our society that is overweight. And there's even a portion of them that are obese. So it's a pretty normal thing. I don't know where you grew up in America, but where I grew up, yeah, I saw fat people quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, so what are you trying to say here? Like, should I just be attracted to fat people? And like, is that the real, the chosen path is to just look at fat people and go, oh, no, I'm good. I'm fine. I don't want to I'm good. I'm perfectly fine thinking that thinner people are chef's kiss, beautiful, goodness. And by the way, you watching this video right now, oh, you smell good today. It is a reflection of what the people in power want us to think. I, I hate it so much when people have conspiracy themed brains. Like in order for me to, in order for me to believe what you want to want me to believe, I would have to believe like a million other things are true right it's it's like when somebody says that the earth is flat i would have to believe that not only is the united states government lying to me but every single other nation around the world simultaneously has to come together and put out this illusion that the earth being flat is sorry the earth being round is like you know like that's what they wanted us to believe so i have to believe all these other things you know what to one degree or another society does want the people to be thinner um, maybe in a passive way because we have things like stairs and we have things like accessibility, um, non-accessibility places and things like that. We've become more accessible for other people that have, have uh, less and less ability to walk and things such and so forth. But I think that it's obviously a benefit to be thinner, obviously. Like you get your healthier, um, you can work more, I suppose. You probably have an increased chance of taking, taking care of your children because you're healthier, I, I, I mean, I guess, like, yeah, but also here in America, we're also, like, really okay with people being fat. Like, it's actually okay. Like, go over to, like, any of those, like, you know, like, Eastern um, countries, dude, like, Asian countries, bro. They have strict rules against being fat. It's heavily demonized in those countries, so, eh. Is good and pure and attractive. We soak up so much more from the world and our environment than we like to think. We are not immune to propaganda. Well, yeah, of course we soak up what... Okay, I'm sorry, dude. I, sometimes I hear people talk and I go, what? that is the most default take I've ever heard in my life. Like, we're formed by the things around us. Yeah, there's a reason why I wear a shirt, pants, and you work a job and drive cars. You know why? Because society tells us that's what we're supposed to do. Of, yeah... Yeah, but if society wasn't there, then I guess I'd be, like, rolling balls of clay into pots and doing that. I, I, I don't know what you're – I don't know what this even – yes, yes, splotch maker, this is correct. Yes, there's a reason why I do certain things in society because I want to operate in society. Yes. Old in our environment than we like to think. We are not immune to propaganda. People get high and mighty about things like disabilities and fatness, like they're somehow inherently bad and – it, okay, I think most people would agree with me that being fat is generally speaking bad and having a disability is obviously not good as well. Like you don't want to have a disability. Am I wrong? Like it's it's okay that you have a disability. Like it's something that it, it's not something you can control for the most part. 
So it's fine, right? But it's obviously not optimal. Like people are not going out of their way and celebrating the fact that they got a BPD diagnosis or whatever. Maybe there are, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's not optimal. Like there are not many people out there that are happy that they have ADD, even though there are people that celebrate it. Like, oh, it's a superpower, which is not obviously. But there are plenty of people that will do that. But most people are walking around the world not celebrating the fact that they have no legs or whatever the fuck. Like that's crazy. So I understand what they're saying. I understand what she's saying, but it's they're all disadvantages they're all disadvantages no matter how you want to look at it like i'm sure you can find you can try to cope your way into thinking that having no legs is like a benefit somehow um but most of the time it's not so i don't know what you're trying to say here but it's dumb it's like disabilities and fatness like they're somehow inherently bad and unattractive and not good why do we think that because that is the message that we've been shown Okay, I'm gonna, okay, when an animal is born, or, okay, let's do it something really simple, okay? There was a nature documentary that I was watching a while ago on Netflix, and it was David Attenborough, obviously, so it, it, there was a, I think it was a lion that got dropped kicked by a giraffe, and the giraffe, like, drop kicked its jaw, literally broke it, and it was crazy, it was insane, you know, Dave Attenborough was obviously killing it, so, you know, you, <sighs> In the natural world of the, the jungle, the lioness loses its access to the jaw. And because of that, they shunned her because she could not hunt. That's what happened. And that's a disability, right? That lioness could no longer eat or hunt because having a jaw is pretty essential, especially if you're a lion. And they shunned her and they casted her out and then she died because she couldn't eat or contribute to the pack. Um, so it's definitely something that happens everywhere. If you're disabled, you're not going to be taken care of to the same degree that other people are going to be taken care of unless you have things in place that are going to subsidize you or you have a community of people around you and things like that that are going to take care of you, right? Um, to pick up the slack where you can't. And that's beautiful, especially in our society. I, I do treasure that. That's amazing. But you can't expect people to just go, it's because society tells us that disabled people are, you know, quote unquote, bad or fatness is bad or whatever. That's the real reason we don't like it. Mm, no, that's not the real reason. There's a reason why, like, for all of time, there weren't people that had many disabilities because those people just basically died out, right? Like, having bad eyesight was a detriment. Having no legs is a detriment. So, like, for a long time, especially in a world where you needed to work, like, all the time, like, whether that be mending the fields and yielding better crop or sacrificing a virgin to yield better, better seed or whatever or dying in war or even having a child and literally fucking dying on the, the birthing table because you i don't know exactly how they used to give birth i don't know whatever but a lot of women used to die giving birth but the point i'm making is for a long time yes it was not a good thing and because we live in a society nowadays where these things are more acceptable and they're also like okay now we're, 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 we're more accommodating it's beautiful but you can't just sit there and say it's society that tells us that that's bullshit we see it a lot in the animal kingdom we see it everywhere if you have a defect, most of the time that shit is not celebrated in the animal kingdom. It's actively, it's such a, I just hate it when people say this shit because it's a, it's an excuse. It's a coping mechanism for them to basically um, forgive their bad activity, their bad behavior, and basically blame it on society. Again, externalizing a lot of their issues, dude. It's crazy. No responsibility ever taken. Never looking at it as something that we, you can do in order to solve your problem, but instead blaming it on society. We think that. Because that is the message that we've been shown. But because the message is so insidious and- I wouldn't say it's insidious, dude, like- There from the beginning of our lives, we don't question it, we just absorb it. And when we just absorb something from the beginning of our lives, we think it's just common sense. Let's, let's do it like this, okay? Let's say this. Do you think that you shouldn't wear a shirt? Because society tells us that we should we, sh we should wear shirts, right? Would, do you think that you shouldn't wear a shirt? Do you think you should wear pants? Do you think you should wash? Because society tells us to wash. So would you go against that? Why are you going against something as, as ginormous as being fat or a disability as a quote-unquote bad thing, but you're not going against something as like way crazier compared to like washing yourself? I mean, w society literally tells us that. You don't have to wash yourself, right? You could just totally just not do that. So why don't you just not wash yourself why do you have a job why do you do anything if that's the case why not question literally everything because society is so incredibly insidious it's such a bizarre way of thinking about any of this shit and it doesn't even make sense even using it in a basic degree so like i know you don't actually believe this shit and it sucks that these people can just 
literally say these words and have no meaning behind them. They, this person's not even taking their own advice here. If you genuinely think society is evil and just, just, just disgusting and all this other stuff, then leave society, I guess. Or, like, don't follow along with the rules that you don't have to follow along. Like, nobody cares that you don't take a shower, right? So we don't interrogate it, and we don't want to interrogate it. But these are messages that we are being fed. There is no innate body hierarchy, no truth, and this is attractive, this isn't. It is shaped by the media and our culture. Splashmaker is gone. Splashmaker is too far gone at this point. There's no, there's no way that we can rescue her or try to drag her up from the pits of her despair. It's over. She's gone. She's too lost at this point. She has been consumed and she has consumed too much. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a lot of people lose weight and then say really mean things about fat people. Or even in talking about their weight loss, make it very clear that like being fat is the worst thing ever and they think fat people are gross and ugly and bad. And I don't think the fat, th I don't think being fat is the worst thing ever, but they have to say that being fat is the worst thing ever because it's a extreme take and it makes people on the other side seem like they're a lot crazier. And I know a lot of people lose weight for a variety of reasons. So if you do and you want to avoid sounding like that, here are some things that I appreciate as a fat person, people who have lost weight saying and not saying to me. And like, this isn't about me specifically. This is just like how to maybe be more considerate or nicer to your fat friends if you've lost a lot of weight. The yeah, but I don't really care about that though, right? Like, I understand you want to be nice to your fat friends, but simultaneously, um, I have to dictate my speech pattern to make sure that my fat friends feel okay around. Like, it's good to be good to your friends, but sometimes it's also good to not be good to your friends if the ultimate goal of that is gooder, if that makes any sense. First thing I would say is, like, don't assume what worked for you will work for someone else, and don't prescribe your lifestyle onto somebody else. And it depends on what it is, right? I mean, most people can prescribe of a diet, a diet and exercise as a way of losing weight. Most people that have lost weight, that is how they did it. So if you're prescribing, if somebody, if one of your friends is fat and they ask you how to lose weight and you hit them with diet and exercise, obviously it's a very general thing. And you might seem like an asshole saying that, to be honest. But um, that is the be all end all. That is the number one thing that you're supposed to do, which is just focus on your diet and exercise every once in a while. And don't preach because a lot of people get very... Yeah, but no, most people don't. Uh, I don't think... Okay. I could be wrong on this, dude. But most of the time, if you have friends, you're not really talking about that stuff. I don't... I could be wrong. Maybe your friends, maybe you and your guys' friends talking about that stuff. But when I'm around my friends, we don't talk about that stuff. We're talking about things that pretty much don't matter. And if we do talk about things that do matter, ultimately, they're not really things of like that type of substance, if that makes any sense. More general. Um, evangelizing about their diets and their exercise routine. Or, of course, a drug like Ozempic or Wegovy. And I think going into a conversation, if somebody remarks on your weight loss, it's like fine to talk about if they're like, how did you do it? Which is quite rude. You do not have to tell them. It's it's quite rude to ask somebody how they lost weight. Um, I could see it being rude. Sure. I, I, I don't think generally many people would find it rude, right? Unless it's, I don't know. I, I Whatever. It's such a dumb But point. if you want to, you can. Just don't lie if you don't want to say then say i'd rather not talk about it what are we even talking about right now if somebody asks you how you lost weight and you think it's rude you don't have to answer is obvious yes of course and don't lie why why are we even talking about this what does that have to do with anything because if you do lie a lot of times people will copy whatever you're saying because everybody's desperate to be skinny of course if you there's a lot of weight loss channels out there on tiktok especially that think that Oh, man, it's, so, it's actually so bizarre, dude. I don't know if you guys have ever come across those, like, weird videos of, like, the random doctor telling you that he has a, a special tea that will help you lose 20 pounds in two weeks, which is crazy as fuck. Like, can you imagine literally doing nothing to change your diet and you're literally adding something extra in and somehow you manage to lose weight? It's not true. Um, or the people that go, Make sure you check out my fitness program, the link down below, and make sure you put in my coupon code to get an additional 20% off. Also, make sure you check out my cookbook, because guess what? I've got crazy good recipes in there, all for $19.99. But wait, if you go down there in the next two days, I'll make sure to get you my specialized fitness program. Like these guys that are you know, abbed up or whatever, a lot of these dudes are just bullshitting you. Like, a lot of these dudes look the way that they do so they can sell you shit. And um, it's real sad because a lot of people do get caught up in it and they want to look in this particular way. 
And it makes a lot of sense, obviously, but you're never going to look like that. Most people can't even grow abs, to be honest. Like, I mean, everybody does have the ability to have abs, but most people will never be below a certain body fat percentage to have abs. Some people can just have naturally abs, but those people are usually anomalies, which are probably the dudes that are selling you this shit to begin with, right? And by the way, there is no tea out there that is going to make you lose 20 pounds in two weeks. If you are like talking to a fat person and they don't acknowledge your weight loss like or any person please know that they're probably trying to be polite about it because it's rude to comment on other people's bodies it depends on what you mean by rude to comment on other people's bodies sometimes it could be but other times i feel like it's okay um like we have industries dedicated to it right not mm, i guess she's right it could be it could be rude and if you want to talk about it i would say either like focus on the reasons behind it if they're positive or if you want to talk about how you're like treated differently because of it i think that's fine too I would say just avoid implying that being treated worse when you're fatter is deserved. Like, please don't imply that to you, any fat people that you care about or like at all. And you would be shocked how many people do this. It's extremely rude. I think it's so fine to talk about your diet and exercise habits changing if like that's been a positive thing for you. Like, I want to hear what's been positive for you and like why you're happy, I guess. But like, let's be careful when you talk about that if they've made you lose a lot of weight with equating them with weight loss automatically because a lot of times people can have similar habits and not lose weight or they will lose weight for reasons unrelated to habits so let's just like make sure we're not talking about them as the exact same thing you can lose weight from being sick yeah sure that could be something that happens and if you comment on somebody losing weight and they did nothing to lose that weight besides obviously having an illness that could be probably a little bit mean spirited compared to that person but most people are not gonna know probably like if you look different or significantly different compared to most other people and somebody goes oh my god you you look so great compared to the last time you looked and then you're just sitting there like bro i just like had cancer and you guys like <laughs> jesus fucking christ i guess i look better post cancer than i did pre-cancer crazy i've seen that before but most people will take it fine because most people that lose weight are not losing weight from sicknesses most people are losing weight from a um diet and exercise probably so i understand what she's saying but let's be honest for a second most people that are losing weight are doing it for themselves and they're doing it um purposely lastly i would say don't compliment yourself when it's at the expense of someone else i think that's almost impossible i think that's almost impossible if i said i'm pretty good at having conversations with people the implication of that is there are people that are less equipped to handle conversations compared to me so that by itself means that i'm putting somebody else down i don't even know how i would compliment myself that would be not bringing somebody else down i have to think about that like i'm really good at this game would mean that i'm better than somebody else or i'm pretty would mean that maybe uh, i guess there are ways of doing it but the most ways in which we compliment ourselves uh, would be bringing other people down as a byproduct of that. But nobody thinks like that because it's such a bizarre way of thinking. Like if somebody was like, my teeth are white, that would mean that there would somebody there would be somebody out there with yellower teeth and you're just shitting on them, I guess. I don't know. It's such a bizarre way of, it, it's such a weird way of saying that, dude. So like if I, if I was in a group of people and I was like, man, I'm just so good at Fortnite. And there was like that one person that was like, mm, I'm not good at Fortnite because this guy's better than me. I don't give a fuck about that guy. Hey, don't compliment yourself when it's at the expense of someone else. For example, I'm just so much prettier now. You know what I mean? Like, I think a lot of times when people say these things, they don't realize they're implicitly like demeaning the person in front of them, but it can be extremely rude. Yeah, but I don't care personally. If I'm better, if I'm better now at Fortnite since I lost lost weight and my fingers are now more, they're more rejuvenated. And now they're able to get in there into the finger motions and things such and so forth, and I'm able to play Fortnite at a much uh, a faster rate and things like that. I'm gonna brag about it. So good, bro. What do you want? So do watch that if you want to be considerate to your fat friends. You are. I just I'm just starting to think I just don't want fat friends i think that's probably the the thing i just, just get them out of my life completely of course entitled to do whatever you want with your body and you can talk about it whatever way you want but please know that if you talk about it in a way that is implicitly demeaning to the people you are talking to then they may not want to hang out with you as much True. that's all 
not she's not wrong she's not wrong dude sometimes if you say something it's gonna be off-putting to somebody else they're not entitled to stay around you that's completely fine that's completely fine understandable and you shouldn't expect anything less but anyway guys that's the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did i'd appreciate it very big leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all those things i'd appreciate tremendously because i appreciate you tremendously it helps me grow in the algorithm so um yep just let everybody know we do live streams on the channel almost every day so you can check me out around 6 p.m est and we're doing live streams almost every day like i said come in come by talk have some fun um if you watch the video and or uh you're here right now however you got here leave it down below by typing in fence because we have a nature we're, we're building a big nature uh i guess exhibit or park or whatever but we need fences because there are terrible disgusting things on the outside of that fence um, that we need out, okay, like concrete and things like that. But concrete might be okay, actually, depending on how much concrete. But fence, we need to make sure all the animals are safe and that uh, they have a great environment and things such and so forth to thrive and be beautiful and amazing things. So fences, leave that down below. Um, or if there's a fence emoji, you can also put that down there. I appreciate any of those things. By the way, um, speaking of fence, you smell great. Um, I don't know what that had to do with being, uh, had to do with the fence, but you really do smell fantastic today. I was, I'm gonna, it's gonna sound a little bit weird, but when I exist in this world and I inhale, I do smell you, and that's obviously amazing. I love it. I, it's one of my favorite things I've ever done ever in my entire life, and I crave it every day. I crave the sensation of what you bring to life, and I love the way that you're able to navigate and be a progressive and beautiful and awesome person. I really, 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 really enjoy that about you. Please keep being amazing. I love you. Anyway. We're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my socials, they'll be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.